Hello and welcome to the Trauma Treatment Collective vlog. Today we're going to be talking about what to do to support your clients in between sessions. So I'll start off by talking a little bit about time. So you'll hear people say, you know, all wounds are healed in time or it just takes time or just give it time, you know. Um, and I agree with that. Time is important, but it's also important what you do within that time. So I like to talk a lot to my clients about when they say those types of things is it's like, yeah, we could have time. We could have as much time as we need. Um, but but if we don't do anything in that time, then it also is not very productive. And so I want to talk about the time in between sessions and what clients do and how we can support them and how to be able to help them make the most of that time. If you think about it, uh, clients spend more time with outside of session than they do in session with us. I was about to say it the opposite, but it's actually the other way around. Clients spend more time outside of session than they do in session. At the most for me as an outpatient therapist, I probably will spend around uh, one to two hours with a client. Very, I have some clients that I see bi-weekly um, for special cases, but for the most part, I work with clients who can sustain one time a week um, in session. And we're going to talk a little bit more later, later about how do you, what do you do when a client can't sustain um, and how do we make that referral for maybe higher level of service. But um, so usually I'm seeing a client one time a week for one hour a week um, and then the rest of the time they're on their own. They're doing their own thing. They're living their life. They're going on about their business. Um, but I also want to make sure that that time is being used wisely because if not, a lot of times I will hear clients talk about how they feel like things are unraveling. So we kind of put everything together and we work really hard and we make big shifts and we make big changes. Um, but then throughout the week, it feels like those things are slipping backwards or they're taking, you hear clients say things like they're taking steps back backwards um, or those kinds of things and so um, really helping them to understand what to do while they're outside of session and how to support themselves and then also when to reach out for support um, so you know a lot of times I will talk about you know let's work on really being able to be a resource for yourself and to resource yourself but sometimes that might not be possible and what do you do in the meantime what do you do in between time when we don't have a session planned for another couple of days or so so um, that's why time is so important. It really allows things to, it's an opportunity in that time. A lot of times I like to tell clients, it's an opportunity for things that we have worked on to settle, to shift. Um, it's a great opportunity in between sessions to really work on regulation and brain regulation into the nervous system. Um, if you work from a nervous system perspective, which I do, um, I really focus on that being a time to really work on safety and stabilization. Um, really kind of helping those things to really get rooted in and to be a norm for that client versus the abnormal thing. Um, so we're really starting to switch that wiring to they feel safe and stabilized more than they feel uh, dysfunction, you know, dysfunctional or dysregulated or having, you know, a hard time managing themselves. Um, so we're really trying to switch that norm. So we use that time in between session to really bring that into the situation to really help the nervous system to start to repattern into a more healthier nervous system. Um, so ways to help clients. One, you want to identify barriers. So you want to think about, okay, what are the barriers that are out there that are hindering clients from being successful in between sessions? Um, one, a couple of those things could be safety. So I've talked a little bit about clients and the importance. If you've, if you've watched any of my vlogs in the past, you may have heard me talk a little bit about safety and how important that is for trauma work um, and making sure that clients feel safe. So one of the barriers may be that they don't feel safe outside of session. The only time they do feel safe is with you. So that's going to be an opportunity for you to really help them to connect with a sense of safety outside of session. And how can they bring more safety into their environment? How can they bring more safety into their relationships? How can they bring more safety to it within themselves? Um, really to be able to connect with that and figure out ways to help them to identify safety outside of session. The other thing is going to be um, maybe they don't know how to use the stabilization skills that you've taught them. Um, so sometimes clients will be like, oh, yeah, 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 I, you know, deep breathe. Or, oh, yeah, I, I um, you know, do meditation or visualization or whatever it is. That's how they um, help themselves throughout the week. But sometimes or not sometimes, but all the time I'll have clients practice that in session because I want to see that they actually do know how to use it and that it actually has an effect. Um, and helping them to track that effect. I think a lot of times clients will do things but not really 
track what that does for their bodies and what that does for their nervous systems and what that does for their brains and just really help them to notice the shift um, and, and really kind of sink that shift in. And when I say sink that shift in, I'm really talking about fleshing it out. So what does it feel like? What's the sensations you get? What's the images you get? Um, what's the movements in your body that you notice, you know, really trying to really help them to feel what it feels like to shift from being dysregulated to regulated. So that's one of the things that I will do um, is really help them with that. Another barrier might be containment. So um, if a client is really kind of spinning out in between sessions, they may not be able to contain the things that are coming up. So say they're having flashbacks, nightmares, intrusive thoughts, those kinds of things that go with traditional um, PTSD symptoms, then they may not be able to contain those things. So really helping them to develop a way to contain those things is going to be really important. So um, sometimes I'll have clients visualize containers that they can put them in, or I have clients visualize kind of setting them on a place that feels far enough. So that may be, I'll say, what if we set it across the room? Does that feel far enough? No. What if we set it outside in the waiting room? Does that feel far enough? No. What if we set it outside in the parking lot? And I'll just keep going further and further. And sometimes I'll be like, what if we set it on another planet in another universe? You know, like as far as we need to go to help them to feel safe. Um, and have them visualize themselves placing the stuff that's coming up, kind of gathering it all up and placing it there until our next session. And as much as they have to continue to keep doing that, if it brings relief, I will have them do it as much as they can, as much as they're willing to, to help them to bring containment so that it's not something that they are ruminating on or getting stuck in or obsessing about, but it's something that they can say, okay, this is coming up. I'm going to set it over here and I'll talk to Nina when I get to my next session. So containment may be another reason why the time in between sessions is not going as well as you'd like it to go. Uh, support groups. So, uh, well, oh, I'm sorry, I missed one. Crisis planning. Um, that's another, you know, barrier. So they don't know what to do. If they do have a crisis or they do have something that feels like a crisis to them, then what do I do? Or maybe a little less than a crisis, but look, so I feel a little dysregulated or I feel a little overwhelmed or I feel a little depressed or anxious or however it comes up for them. What do I do? How do I deal with that? How do I manage that? So having a plan and having something that they can do that's very step or oriented that says we do this then you do this then you do this then you do this whatever you find that works for your way of work with clients and wanting what you want to focus on is going to be important so for my crisis plans I'm going to focus on internal resources I'm always going to try to resource them into a better place so internal resources what can we do with no one else involved to help them regulate then I'm going to focus on external resources so if that doesn't work then you can reach out to someone or reach out to something to be able to help help you to regulate. Um, so that's my crisis plan or that's my plan that I do with clients to really kind of lay it out. And we write it out um, in session. I give them a copy. I keep a copy so that if a crisis does arise and they do reach out to me, I have a copy of that and I can kind of walk them through and say, okay, so here's the steps that we said we were going to do. Where are you? Um, what's worked? What's not worked? What are you noticing? Those kinds of things. So that's really important when working with clients is to have a crisis plan or at least some type of plan. If it's not a crisis plan, maybe they don't feel like they need a crisis plan because it's not to that level. Um, just having a plan of, hey, when you feel these things, this is, these are the things you're going to do. So that could be really helpful for clients to really utilize the time in between sessions and to be successful with it. Um, so then when you're thinking about calling in more reinforcements, now we're going to get to support groups um, and processing groups and those kinds of things. If you find that a client is not able to sustain outside of session um, from week to week, so from seven days to seven days, usually for me, I see clients the same day, the same time every week. Um, that's their time slot and that's kind of how we do it. So it's a, usually an even seven days in between sessions that I see them. Um, if I find that they can't sustain, I'm gonna start be, being curious about whether outpatient therapy is enough. Um, and maybe we need to go to a higher level. So the next level be, um, beyond outpatient would be intensive outpatient. So you're going to more often. Another thing in between intensive outpatient and outpatient that I found to be helpful sometimes for clients is getting other resources in place. So maybe they're doing a support group, maybe they're doing a processing group, maybe they're going to trauma-informed yoga, maybe they are working with a body worker just to kind of work on regulation in the nervous system from a body perspective. Um, lots of different things, cranial sacral therapy. 
anything that I can do to help them feel supported and to help them feel like they're getting regulation into their system is what I'm going to suggest. Um, and so that could be an intermediate step in between outpatient and intensive outpatient is to help them get into more resources throughout the week that are helping them to support them um, moving towards more regulation, to more stabilization, to more safety. Um, and maybe it's a different approach than just uh, psychotherapy. It could be other types of healing modalities that are used to help clients that they find to be helpful for them. Um, so that's something you can do when you're calling in outside resources. Uh, I may even bump a client up to two times a week, just if I have space in my schedule and if I think it might be helpful. So for instance, sometimes I'll drop clients down to every other week if they're doing really well and we wanna see kind of how they can sustain on their own. So we're moving more towards kind of them starting to build up resources outside of me and they're able to kind of sustain that. Then we'll move to one time, a, a twice, a, twice a month. If I find for some reason, let's say something goes awry in their life or in their family's life or, you know, something in their environment just starts to get a little off kilter and it's creating stress for them, I may bump them back up to two, to every week. Um, and now I'm seeing them every week. If I have a client that I'm seeing every week and something goes awry, I may bump them up to two times a week. And that's just until we get stabilization back in place, until they're feeling good, until we kind of get through the hard, hard spot, then I'll bring them back down to where they were. So it's not once you bump them up, you got to leave them up there and you can't ever bring them back down. You may bump them up and then bring them back down and bump them up and bring them back down and really helping them to be able to identify what they need. I mean, think that's, I think, excuse me, that's the number one thing that I'm trying to do is really help them to say, hey, this is what I'm needing to do the best I can possibly do do in this situation or to maintain as much as I can and having them request like, hey, can I start seeing you every, you know, every week or can I start seeing you two times a week? And then I have them kind of come down and, you know, move around like that. So those are some of the things I do. Um, the last thing I want to talk about is, is helping clients to identify when to reach out to you. So everyone's different. Everyone practices different. And so I'm not really here to kind of tell you that, oh, at this point, a client should reach out to you. But I think it's important for you as the treatment professional to know what your boundaries are around that and when it's okay for a client to reach out to you and maybe when it's not okay to for a client to reach out to you. So having some emergency policy in place that you share with your client at the beginning of the work, you reiterate throughout the work, especially during hard times for them, it's going to be really important. And I really think as a trauma treatment professional, it's really important for you to know kind of where your boundaries are and knowing what you can and can't do. Um, a lot of times I'll tell you what I do is a lot of times I will actually talk with clients about what constitutes an emergency. Um, and then if I feel like they understand that, then I'll say, you can reach out to me for an emergency. My philosophy is, is that I don't want them to undo all the work we've done because they're out there trying to make it on their own. Um, so I'd rather for them to reach out to me for us to have a quick little conversation, for them to feel supported, for them to, for us to get them back to a stable last place. And then for us to figure out if we need to either bump up their session and get them in quicker, or if we can wait until our regular scheduled session and we can go for there. Um, so I think that's really important that clients have that option. Um, that's the way I like to work. But you have to think about what's your way of work, how you would like to extend yourself to clients, um, and then making sure that you have boundaries around that because it can become overwhelming. It can become too much. If you have four or five clients who are having crisis all at the same time, especially around the holidays, that can sometimes happen. Um, it can be a lot if you're telling all your clients to call you whenever they need you and you have four or five clients calling you, plus you're still meeting with clients and it's just a lot. So be careful when you're setting your boundaries, be realistic about what you really can do. If every one of your clients were in crisis at one time, could you meet everyone's needs based on what you're saying you can do? So that's just a way to kind of think about it and to really be realistic about, you know, what you can and can't do. So those are some things you can do to support clients in between sessions, maybe some ways of conceptualizing things and thinking about what clients might need and how you can help them identify those needs and to engage in those those resources and things that might be helpful for them to be able to sustain in between sessions. So um, if you have comments, I'd love to hear them. Please comment down below and let me know your thoughts. And until next time, you guys have a great rest of your day. Take care. Bye-bye.